वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ हीट ट्रांसफर मीडिया एंड सोलर एनर्जी नाउ इन द सोलर एनर्जी वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्क्राइब द स्टर्लिंग इंजन व्हिच इज मोस्ट कॉमनली यूज इन वेरियस सोलर साइकिल्स सो प्रीवियसली वी हैड डिस्कशन अबाउट द सेंट्रल सोलर टावर वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द सोलर डिश सिस्टम एंड वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ हीट ट्रांसफर फ्लूड apart from this uh, we discussed about the various classification aspects of these heat transfer fluids in this particular chapter we will discuss about the remaining part of the classification stream of uh, heat transfer fluid that is water or steam thermal oils organics various kind of organic uh, systems uh, molten salts uh, liquid metals and stirling cycle which is being used uh, uh, in the the solar power cycles so let us take up uh, the uh, the first uh, classification of this particular lecture and the second one in the series that is water or steam uh, water is again uh, apart from this uh, air it is available in abundance relatively cheaper price and commonly available so easily availability economic aspects etc it are it reflects that water is a very good candidate for heat transfer media and it can convert into the steam and again steam is again poses a very good the heat transfer media so research and development of water steam system this is based on single fluid solar thermal system like uh, we can produce the direct steam generator dsg parabolic trough now day back in 1980s when alternatives to oil based technology uh, were explored and people were trying to uh, to uh, go for various kind of non conventional system then r and d work been started now if uh, the heat transfer fluid is not water steam the thermal energy whatever collected at the receiver is carried to the steam generator by non water based heat transfer fluid and then transferred to the working fluid usually it is the water or steam whatever now uh, the working fluid thereafter carries this particular amount of energy to turbine to produce the electricity now use of uh, this water or steam as both heat transfer fluid and a working fluid simplifies the system and this lead to the improved efficiency and decreases the cost of electricity production the main problem with the water steam stf is the scarcity of water in desert regions because these uh, concentrated solar power plants Uh, are mostly located in desert where the large land area because uh, in that case the the land area are abundantly available and high direct solar radiation intensity are usually available but there is no water the high temperature steam uh, corrosion in several different alloy has been reported in the literature this is again uh, a very serious problem so people have suggested that uh, the corrosion rates of stainless steel in high temperature neutral aqueous solution were one of the two orders of magnitude lower than that of the carbon steel the corrosion rate of uh, chromium steel it was uh, at least 10 times less than that of the carbon steel so uh, people have used the water and still the water is being used as a heat transfer for media very commonly and the best example is your boiler where you are producing the steam discharging that steam to give the the latent heat and then you are condensing the water and again recirculating it so it offers a wide spectrum but the only limitation with the water is that it uh, it has uh, some pressure sensitive or temperature sensitive approaches so you cannot go beyond and specific levels so in that case either the pressure limitation suppose if you wish to produce the steam at say 300 degrees celsius 
then obviously the pressure limitation may come into the picture in that case you are always looking for some uh, some um, uh, cost effective heat transfer fluid uh, and obviously you are looking for some more ranges of uh, heat transfer fluid with respect to the temperature thermal oils these are offering again a long range of temperature spectrum and these thermal oils are attributed to the mineral oil silicon oil synthetic oils so they have been tested used as uh, the heat transfer fluid in various uh, concentrated solar power applications now these oils uh, can be thermally stable only say up to 400 degrees celsius uh, because beyond this uh, they may have the tendency to dissociate disintegrate and uh, they may cause some environmental problem as well as they may create the corrosion issues and safety related issues in the system in question and that is the reason they are commonly used for uh, high temperature and highly efficient solar thermal system because of this up, they can use up to say 400 degree celsius another issue with these thermal oil is that they are very expensive mineral oil silicon oil synthetic oil these are oil are very much expensive because of the processing cost then people have used uh, several organics material they are also being used as the heat transfer fluids in concentrated solar power system for example biphenyl diphenyl oxide this pair is commonly used in commercial uh, concentrated solar power system now this biphenyl diphenyl oxide is eutectic mixture of two very stable organic compounds that is the biphenyl referred as c12h10 and diphenyl oxide referred as c12h10o now you see the operating temperature range because obviously is an engineering perspective we are looking for the operating temperature range so the operating temperature range of these biphenyl diphenyl oxide is very no, low narrow very narrow usually within 12 to 393 degree celsius the first solar thermal power plant with this these organic material as the heat transfer fluid it was commissioned in 2009 at badajoz spain and currently there are a total eight solar thermal power plants they are operating with biphenyl diphenyl oxide another uh, similar type of a plant named as megha solar plant csp project a concentrating solar power project located at anantpur andhra pradesh in india is started in year 2014 with a production capacity of 50 megawatt electricity now uh, apart from this these organic uh, material there are certain molten salts they are again having a large spectrum of uh, temperature range operating temperature range so these uh, molten salt make excellent heat transfer fluids mainly due to their thermal stability at high temperature and generally greater than 500 degrees celsius molten salts also have properties comparable to water at high temperature including similar viscosity and a low vapor pressure now another important advantage of utilizing molten salt in the power tower system is that the capability of thermal energy storage this is again a quite important that how much thermal energy it can store because subsequently it can be utilized in the process so while the salts are limited by their own thermal properties when it comes to high temperature stability the stability of piping and container material must also be taken into consideration when it comes to the temperature range at which these salts are handled um, we have enlisted some of the commercially available molten salts with their uh, uh, various parameters uh, in this particular table that is nano3 kno3 um, uh, nano3 salt their melting point is 142 degrees celsius with a stability temperature of 535 
and viscosity, thermal conductivity and the heat capacity is given. Now, the apart from this, the corrosion rate is again very important because uh, obviously it is quite desirable that it should not be corrosive in nature. Similarly, NaNO3 that is uh, the blend of uh, this uh, salt, the NaNO3 7 percent, KNO3 45 percent and CaNO3 hold twice 48 percent. It possesses the melting point is 120 degrees Celsius and stability temperature is 500 and corrosion rate is 6 to 10. Similarly, uh, sodium nitrate, potassium nitrate and lithium nitrate, they are having the melting point of say 130 degrees Celsius with the stability temperature 600 degrees Celsius. Then we have enlisted couple of more uh, um, uh, salts and uh, these salts like uh, Li2OCO3, Na2CO3 and uh, potassium carbonate, they are having the 400 degree Celsius melting point with a stability temperature of 800 to 850 degree Celsius. So, we have enlisted all these things and these all parameters like melting point, stability temperature, viscosity, thermal conductivity, heat capacity, corrosion rates, all these things are extremely important while selection of, while we are selecting the proper salt for our uh, operation in question. Now, another category of this heat transfer fluid is the liquid metal. Now, these liquid metal, they have been used in various uh, nuclear industries uh, since 1940 and they are currently being studied for the use in the solar thermal system as heat transfer fluid and thermal storage uh, media. Now, these liquid metals, they have not been used in the commercial concentrated solar power application until now. Um, Though they have the several promising properties including extensive operating temperature range, low viscosity and efficient heat transfer characteristics. Uh, for example, liquid sodium, this has an operating temperature range from 98 to 883 degree Celsius. Now, one major disadvantage of uh, these liquid metal is the cost cost of these liquid metals are relatively higher than that of molten salt or steam water system. Also heat capacities of these liquid metals are relatively lower than uh, various commercially available nitrates, nitrite based salt and therefore they are less favorable to be used as a thermal storage uh, media, thermal energy storage media. Let us take the example of liquid sodium. This, this was first used as a heat transfer fluid and storage media in 1981 in a test plant located at Almeria, Spain. Even though the thermal hydraulic performance was successful, it was decommissioned in 1986 after a sodium fire because sodium is very much sensitive and it is very much hygroscopic in nature. So, liquid sodium has an operating temperature range of uh, as we discussed earlier that 98 to 883 degree Celsius and viscosity is reported to 0.00021 Pascal second. The thermal conductivity is measured as 1.25 watt per meter Kelvin at 600 degree Celsius. The main disadvantage or you can say the disadvantages are its high combustibility when in contact with water and that hydrogen is one of the products from for this liquid sodium water fire. So, uh, I mean uh, hydrogen is extremely dangerous when the question of fire came into existence. However, the fire risk due to the liquid sodium is relatively lower than that of the commercial hydrocarbon fuels. Now, another issue is that high cost of liquid sodium almost four times higher than uh, the solar salt. As far as corrosion issues are in question, 
generally liquid sodium is less aggressive than the other liquid metals with stainless steel. Even though the exact corrosion rates have not been reported, the ceramics such as uh, SIC and uh, the stainless steel, they are highly compatible to be used as piping container material with sodium, uh, liquid sodium. Now, uh, liquid sodium potassium, 22.2 uh, to 77.8 weight percent eutectic mixture. Uh, one of the special feature of this uh, sodium potassium mixture is that it is in liquid state even at room temperature. Its melting point is minus 12 degrees Celsius and the boiling point is 785 degrees Celsius. This special feature also results in more complex handling at room temperature. At 600 degrees Celsius, the viscosity and thermal conductivity of this liquid sodium potassium, it is at 0.0018 Pascal second and 26.2 Watt per meter Kelvin respectively. Now, the cost of this mixture is uh, high, almost four times higher than that um, the solar salt. Uh, as far as uh, the corrosion data on the piping container alloy with this particular mixture, it is as on date, it is not available in the literature. Now, lead bismuth uh, eutectic mixture that is uh, 44.5 to 55.5 weight percent. This lead bismuth eutectic mix composition is another liquid metal which is studied for the, the concentrated solar power system and shortly it is known as LBE. Now, this eutectic mixture has high boiling point. You see that it is around 1530. 3 degree Celsius and its melting point is relatively high and that is around 125 degree Celsius compared to other liquid metals. Now, at 600 degree Celsius, the viscosity and thermal conductivity of liquid uh, lead bismuth, they are at 0 0.00108 Pascal second and 12.8 Watt per meter Kelvin respectively. Now, since liquid bismuth Eutectic mixture is chemically inert with both air and water, there is no hazardous fire risk as in the case of liquid, uh, liquid sodium which we observed. But the cost of this mixture is again extremely high. It is almost 26 times higher than that of the solar salt. Besides this, lead mixtures are toxic in nature especially to the human being. Stainless steel and nickel alloy showed high corrosion with LBE that is greater than 250 uh, per meter per year. But ceramic materials such as SIC and uh, TI3 SIC2 showed the good corrosion resistance with almost zero weight loss even after 1000 hour immersion at the temperature up to 750 degrees Celsius. Then uh, we, there are so many other mixtures available like uh, cadmium bismuth, strontium bismuth, bismuth zinc, calcium copper, eutectic mixture. Now these binary mixture of liquid metals are being investigated for use in heat transfer fluid in concentrated solar power system. Now, combinational material synthesis uh, and high through, uh, throughput uh, characterization techniques, they are used to, to effectively identify the composition which uh, are less corrosive with the piping uh, system or container system. Although the exact molar composition have not been reported, these, uh, these uh, binary mixtures are suggested as a promising candidates in their ongoing work. Corrosion tests with the metallic alloy, they are also going on. Now, we have enlisted uh, data pertaining to the some available and ongoing research related liquid metals like sodium, sodium potassium, sodium nitrate, 
potassium nitrate and lithium nitrate with a melting point stability, viscosity, thermal conductivity, heat capacity, corrosion rate. So, as uh, we told that you see that here the range 98 to 883 minus 12 to 785 you can say almost um, temperature range is 797. 125 to 1533. So, as far as uh, this range is in question, this is again a very promising one. But uh, apart from this, the corrosion effect, the availability, the cost, all these factors which we need to address. Now, let us take the Stirling cycle. We had already discussed about this uh, Stirling cycle in the solar energy system and in parabolic dish system. We have seen that it is required a heat engine that is based on the Stirling cycle. So, let us have a brief discussion about it. In a Stirling cycle, the Carnot cycles compression and expansion syntropic process, they are replaced by two constant volume regeneration processes. Now, during the regeneration process, heat is transferred to a thermal storage device that is called the regenerator during one part and it is transferred back to the working fluid in another part of the cycle. The regenerator this can be a wire or a ceramic mesh or any kind of a porous plug with high thermal mass. The regenerator is assumed to be reversible heat transfer device. Now, um, the Stirling cycle because as we seen the in Rankine cycle or a Carnot cycle, they are having the several sequences or several steps. Now, here you see that uh, uh, this in this uh, diagram, now here you see that uh, uh, the from stage 1 to stage 2, this is thermal expansion heat addition from the some of the external source and from station 2 to station 3, there is a constant volume this in this PV diagram. This is a constant, constant volume heat transfer, internal heat transfer from the gas to the regenerator. Now, again, if we go through from 3 to 4, this is the isothermal compression heat rejection to the external sink. And again, it goes back to from 4 to 1 that is the constant volume heat transfer, internal heat transfer from the regenerator to the gas. Now, if you try to replicate this, this particular step in this TS diagram, you can see the similar type of observation as we discussed in the Carnot cycle. Now, here this is a small animation, this uh, reflects the Stirling cycle. This was invented by Robert Stirling in 1816. Uh, the execution of a Stirling cycle, this requires innovative hardware, that is the main reason the Stirling cycle is not in common, common in practice. Now, it is quite simple that you are supplying the heat source from here. Now, this uh, the inner gas inside this cylinder piston assembly tends to increase by this way, it is pushing the system to the back of the system. Now, here this is the condenser system where it absorbs the, the heat and the gas is again then cooled down. So, by this way you are producing the mechanical power over here. Now, uh, when we are talking about this Stirling cycle, the stage 1 to uh, 2 in the previous system, this is the isothermal heat transfer to the gas uh, at maintained at Th from external sources. So, as uh, we see that gas expands isothermally here it is expands isothermally. This left system moves outward. So, it is moving outward during the work and the gas pressure drops. Now, if we go to the stage 2 or station 2, both the piston moves to the right at the same rate. Here you can see they are moving the same rate, keeping constant volume until the entire gas pushes the uh, to the right chamber that is passing through the regenerator. Now, heat is transferred to the regenerator and gas temperature drops to TL. Now, if uh, we go to station 3 to 4, 
the right piston this one the right piston uh, is moved to the left compressing the gas and heat transfer isothermally from gas to external heat source maintained at T L. So, the gas temperature remains at T L while the pressure rises. Now, in the last stage that is from 4 to 1, the both the pistons are moved to the left uh, at the same rate keeping constant volume and forcing the gas through the regenerator into the left chamber. Now, the gas temperature again rises to T H and cycle completes. So, unlike internal combustion engine, a Stirling cycle does not exchange the working gas in each cycle and the gas is permanent. The heat is supplied outside the engine, so any heat source can be used, maybe the coal gas, solar energy, nuclear power, etc. Now, a Stirling engine it can reach the high thermal uh, efficiencies than auto or a diesel engine since the heat transfer occurs at constant temperature that is uh, its thermal efficiency is the same as per the Carnot cycle. So, if we try to calculate the efficiency of uh, Stirling cycle that is 1 minus T L upon T H. Now, the pressure changes are very smooth and its torque is uniform. So, it has no valve, exhaust pipe, etc. Thus, a Stirling cycle is quiet and has uh, less maintenance point. So, in other words, it is quite economical. To achieve the competitive efficiency, it needs to work on high pressures which cause the tremendous problem of sealing. The temperature difference Tl minus Th should maintain high for acceptable thermal efficiencies and this results in large thermal stresses in cylinder may be hot and cold ends. Consequently, high strength expensive material should be used. The working fluid has to be an ideal gas, maybe helium or hydrogen they are the typically used because of their high heat conductivity and low molecular masses which lead to faster heat transfer. Fast changes in power output are not easy to achieve which makes the Stirling cycle not so attractive for automotive application. There are so many disadvantages associated with the Stirling engine. Uh, one is that Stirling engine requires heat exchangers for heat input and for heat output. For efficient operation, all thermodynamic cycles require large temperature difference. Dissipation of waste heat is especially complicated because coolant temperature is kept as low as possible to maximize the thermal efficiency. A Stirling engine cannot start instantly and literally needs to warm up because of this uh, some latent time is needed. It is true for all external combustion engine, but for this warm up time may be a bit longer. So, at the outset, in this particular uh, lecture, we had a discussion about the various heat transfer fluids and as well as we discussed about the, the basic concept of uh, Stirling cycle, which is quite useful in uh, various CSPs. And uh, if you wish to have uh, further study, you can have a look about this particular reference. Thank you very much.